We're back again on Lutherans Alive with Lori Tarmy, member of Faith Church in Aliquippa and our coordinator for Southwestern Pennsylvania Health and Wellness Ministry. Uh, Lori, it, it is interesting to hear um, how health and wellness can be addressed and incorporated into congregational life. Uh, we, I think, sometimes can limit our vision um, of congregational life to the worship or to simply the spiritual aspect, but um, as you mentioned earlier in the program, that if we think about it in its broader sense, um, our lives are holistic, and um, all of those can be uh, addressed and ministered to um, as we do these things. Um, we, we spent some time talking about the health and wellness ministry and um, how that can be developed. Um, we also want to spend at least a bit of time talking about the parish nurse uh, program and opportunities that are there for uh, folks in our synod who um, may be eligible and very interested in finding ways to bring their gifts uh, to this kind of a ministry. Um, Mercy, um, their educational piece is, is a big part of what goes on uh, with this program, isn't it? It is. Um, that's where I get 90% of my resources. They've been doing the parish nurse and health and wellness ministry for about 20 years. And so they've, it's, if we would do it differently, we'd be reinventing the wheel. They've already invented it, so, and they're very good at it. Um, they offer programs four times a year that anyone can attend. They offer the um, parish nurse course um, two times a year, and we've already had someone from one of the congregations take that course and become commissioned as a parish nurse. We have someone currently taking the course, and we have two more taking the course the next time it's offered. So that's so we'll have four commissioned parish nurses in the synod as a result of starting the ministry. That's terrific, and I think it speaks volumes too that we have these ecumenical initiatives, that uh, cooperation across denominational lines and institutional lines uh, can bring about some some really uh, positive uh, results that. Um, become active and thriving ministry in congregation. They do, and I'm, I'm actually in touch with, who, she was the former um, program manager at Mercy. She's now working with the Methodists to do what I'm doing with the Lutherans. Um, so we've been in contact, and we're getting ready to sit down at the table and see how we can't work together. Um, so it has crossed ecumenical lines many times, mm -hmm. many times. That's, that's very encouraging. Um, in, in terms of what you're doing now, what would you say gives you the most sense of gratification or fulfillment, uh, being able to, f to fill this uh, particular need in people's lives and to do it in association with uh, the church and uh, with our, our uh, gospel message? You know, Pastor, God has called. I've responded, and I'm committed to, to responding to that call. Um, to sit at the table with these folks that volunteer for these ministries is humbling. Um, I can see and hear the Holy Spirit as they talk amongst themselves and plan their journey in this ministry. Um, I go home every day so much more blessed than I could have ever been a blessing to anyone. And so that's the best way I can explain it is God has called and I've responded and God is directing this whole thing. I'm but the instrument. And I know throughout the process and throughout the journey, um, there are always steps along the way where you um, sit down with or have conversations with folks from the other organizations or institutions and talk about what the next step is or can be um, in terms of what's happening. At this point, do you have a sense of uh, what the uh, near future might have in store or what are your hopes uh, for, for the near future in terms of uh, where, where this ministry may uh, continue on its journey. The grant was was for three years, as I said before. Um, we're getting to the end of the second year, and we've been asked to sit down and plan for the the future. There are two hundred congregations out there. My goal is to have a health and wellness ministry, however it looks, at whatever level, at every one of the congregations. So that's my vision, and it's a big vision, and I know that. But, you know, we've gotten to 23 in two years, and our goal initially was seven in three years. So we've surpassed that goal. So. 
So I'm going to jump up and do a big goal for the next there you go. amount of time that, that I've been given to do this ministry. So. For folks who might uh, be inspired or um, gain a little interest from uh, watching this program, um, what kinds of ways might they connect with you to find out what first steps might be or to begin to think about what's possible for them in their local circumstances? Well, certainly the easiest way is to call the Synod office. Um, they, they know how to get a hold of me. I'm not always here, but um, I'm, I'm readily available. And I have um, email and, and a cell phone. My cell phone number is 724-312-4875. And my email is lorielrn2000 at yahoo.com. And the Senate number is 412-367-8222. Yes. And, of course, there's a Synod website as well that folks, I'm sure, could get connected with there as well. That's one of the, one of the blessings, I guess, of living in this technological age is uh, there are more and more ways for people to get in touch and to share information. And we know that you've been inspired and uh, um, energized about this ministry and um, have a lot to share, both in terms of resources but also in terms of uh, your spiritual grounding and, and uh, your inspiration for this as well. Thank you. Um, in terms of the, the congregations that you've uh, been involved in personally, um, what, what kinds of things would you say you gain from the personal experience of being involved in your parish nurse ministry that you can carry over and share with uh, folks who are new at it and uh, just kind of breaking ground? Well, again, you know, I, I refer back to that as I go out and talk to these volunteers from these teams, and they'll ask me certain situations, and chances are I've done it. You know, in five years I've, I've been in that situation, or I can at least direct them how to, how to go about helping that particular person in that particular situation. But when I sit at the table with these folks, it's just, I, I also can take from them things back to my own little ministry um, that I have in Beaver County. And just to talk about that a little bit again, it, when we first started it, we didn't want the team or the pastors weren't ready to do the team, but we're starting to develop a team now. And I'm watching what the other congregations are doing and taking a little bit of what they're doing and, and using it as well. So we all stand to gain from this. And um, the more that I do this and, and walk the everyday stuff, the more energized I become. I think that's probably a very important principle is that it really does grow out of the local circumstances, the uh, current needs and situations uh, where people are. Lori, thanks so much for taking the time to come in and share with us today. We've actually run out of time for today's program, but You've done a great job of sharing a vision for the ministry and helping people understand what it's about. Thank, Thank you. you very much Thank for being so here much. today. Thank you so much. God bless. And God's blessings in all you do. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today on Lutherans Alive. We hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to hear the interesting story of the development of health and wellness ministry in our synod and in local congregations. Maybe it's a ministry that can work for you. Pray about it. Think about it. And maybe the first steps will be in your hands. Until next time, this is Lutherans Alive. Good day, and God bless you.